In this video, we are going to show you how to replace your AC condenser. Before we start taking anything apart, I need to mention, you want to make sure that you're wearing hand and eye protection at all times, have a professional safely evacuate all the refrigerant in your system. Aside from that, you're going to want to make sure that you have some PAG oil available, it's special AC oil, and it's a good idea to make sure you have an assortment of O-rings for the AC system. With all that said, let's get started. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing we need to do is come right over to our negative battery terminal. We'll use a 10 millimeter, loosen this nut just enough that we can remove the wire from the top of the battery. Set it aside so it's making no contact. Now that we have the negative battery terminal disconnected, we're gonna move along to removing our top cover here. To do that, we'll use a 10 millimeter and remove both of our bolts. The next thing you want to do is reach along to the back side of this and lift straight up. Remove your cover. Now let's move along to removing the air intake from the area. To remove this, we're going to start by removing each of these vent hoses. To remove the vent hose, you can squeeze the clamp, slide it up the hose, remove the hose, give it a quick inspection. Make sure it's soft and pliable, set it aside. Do the same to the other hose. Now let's move along to the mass airflow sensor wiring harness. We'll use some pliers, carefully squeeze on the two ears on this plastic clip. Slide it out of position from the air filter housing. Once you have it off of there, go ahead and remove the wiring from the mass airflow sensor. Now we can move to our two locking clips that hold the upper air filter box to the lower box. Once you have those broken free, go ahead and lift this up to separate it. Now we'll follow this over to the throttle body. To remove it from the throttle body, you can either use a flathead or an 8mm socket. We'll loosen up that clamp just enough that we can remove this. Set this aside. Now let's continue on by getting ready to open up the top of the radiator. Make sure it's cool to the touch, press it down, turn it counterclockwise. Now we can make our way underneath the passenger side front of the vehicle to start draining the coolant. From underneath the passenger side front of the vehicle, you're going to be looking for the lower part of the radiator. You can see that it has the drain right on the passenger side. It has a little area where the coolant will come out from. You want to make sure that you have a way to divert that coolant down into a collection bucket. If you were to have a hose of some sort, you can put that on there and make sure that it goes into a collection bucket so you can recycle it properly. For us, I'm going to go ahead and remove this shield just to get it out of the way so we can have a better view. To remove our skid shield, we're going to start from the back. You're going to have two mounting bolts. Ours has one over here and the other side's broken. For this one, I'm going to loosen it up using a 10 millimeter. Once I have it loose enough, it should be able to slide rearward once we have the forward bolts out. For this last one, I'm going to make sure I'm holding the plate. Now we can lower down the front and slide it rearward to slide it off of the rear bolt. Now that we have the shield down, let's continue on to this area right here. You're going to find that you have a line that goes into the fan shroud. Just carefully separate that. We'll make our way over here and do the exact same thing. Once you have that separated, continue on to draining the coolant. To drain the coolant, you just turn this counterclockwise. Now we can turn this counterclockwise to start releasing the coolant. While this is draining, let's make our way back up top. Now that we have the coolant drained, 
let's continue on up here at our upper radiator hose. We'll loosen this clamp just enough that we can remove the hose from the radiator. We'll set that aside. Let's move along to our overflow hose. Loosen the clamp, remove the hose. Once you have that off of the radiator, continue following it down to where it connects into the fan shroud. We'll pull it right out of place and set that aside. Down underneath that, you'll find that you have another hose that should be pressed into the fan shroud. Just go ahead and dislodge that. Continue on to your fan shroud bolts. We're gonna loosen these. Leave them in there just a couple threads. Now we can start removing our fan from the area. You'll find that it's held in place with four 10 millimeter headed nuts. Go ahead and carefully remove all of those, leaving one on just a couple threads. Continue on to fully removing your last nut on the fan while holding the fan in place. Once you have that nut off of there, the fan should be able to break free. I'll make sure that I'm holding on to it. I don't want it to fall and hit the radiator. We'll carefully pull this up and out of the area and set it aside. Now that we have the fan out of the way, let's remove the fan shroud as well. Now we can start dismounting the top of the radiator from this area here. For that, you'll find that you have two eight millimeter headed mounting bolts, one on either side. Remove them. Now the next area we need to get to is located behind the grill here. You don't necessarily have to remove the grill to get to this area. I'll take this off so you can have a look at what's going on. Now this right here is the area that you're going to have to access. To gain access to this, you can carefully come right in through this area underneath the front bumper. Grab onto the wiring harness, squeeze the locking tab and take it off of there. Pull it out so you can get a nice close look at it through here. As you can see, there's no corrosion. That looks good, so I'll set it aside. Now the next thing I would want to do is use a 24 millimeter wrench. Come right along this area and turn this counterclockwise to remove it. We'll take that off of there. Now you just want to give it a quick inspection. We will be reusing this. Go ahead and set it aside. Now the next thing we're going to do is start removing our AC lines from the AC condenser. You'll find that you have an AC line that goes into the passenger side over here, and then you have another one over on the driver's side. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the one that's on the driver's side first, and then I'll go over and do the exact same thing on the passenger side. To remove this, we're going to use a 12 millimeter headed socket. It's common for these bolts to be corroded in place. If that's the case, just go ahead and hold it still with some pliers. Remove your mounting hardware clean it up, and give it a close inspection. Assuming it looks good, set it aside. Once you've removed the mounting hardware, continue on to removing the line from the AC condenser. Now once you have the line off of there, it's important to note, you want to make sure you cap this off with something. Typically, you can just use a little bit of tape. 
Essentially, we don't want any debris or moisture making its way into the AC system while we continue. I've got the end inspected and taped off. I'll continue on and do the exact same thing on the passenger side. Once you've completed this line over here, you should be able to grab onto that radiator. We're gonna slide it rearward, being careful not to damage anything. Once you have it slid forward, we can start removing the AC condenser from it. You're gonna find that you have two eight millimeter headed bolts holding it in place. Remove the pair. All right, so now that we have that separated, you can carefully grab onto each of these brackets that goes on top of the AC condenser. You'll find one on either side. Once you have those off of there, carefully reach into this area and remove your AC condenser. There it is, friends. Once you have the AC condenser out of there, you're gonna wanna have a look down along the bottom area. It's common to still have the rubber mounts to be stuck to it. Go ahead and remove them. Give it a quick inspection and insert it back into the vehicle. Now before we continue on by installing our brand new AC condenser, it's important to make sure you take some of your brand new PAG oil. We want to add one ounce of this to the low side of the AC system. So with that said, we have a measuring cup. I've marked off the one ounce mark here. So I'll just go ahead and add it into here. Once I've got the proper amount inside my funnel, I'll continue on by putting this into the low side on the AC condenser. That would be considered on the driver's side. Now we're gonna tilt this at an angle so as we pour it in, it can make its way down through the channel and then eventually into the AC condenser. Before we slide the AC condenser into position, let's make sure that we lubricate our lower bushings where the bottom of the AC condenser will slide into. Do the same to the other side. Now, as we bring this down, let's be extremely careful not to damage the fins on the AC condenser, the radiator, or the transmission cooler. While you bring it down, you wanna line up those lower pins. Now we can continue on to our upper brackets. We'll lubricate those, slide them onto the AC condenser. After that, line up your bracket with the radiator, start in each of your mounting bolts. Once you have both brackets and mounting bolts started, go ahead and snug them up. Make sure it's secure. Now we can carefully pull the radiator towards where it needs to be to put in our mounting bolts. Now we can move along to our AC lines. Remove whatever it was that you had capped them off with and then continue on to removing the O-ring from the area. Now you only want to remove this if you are going to be replacing it and it is highly recommended to replace it. To remove it, just use a small pick or screwdriver, get underneath that area and pull it right off. Now we can continue on with a brand new O-ring. We'll slide this into place over the AC line. Now once you have that on there, continue on with a little bit of your PAG oil. It's important to note you want to lubricate the O-ring, but you want to make sure that the oil that you're using does not have any of the dye in it. If you put oil with dye in it, and then you have a leak someday, you're going to think that this is the area with the leak. Let's get this in position, start it in there, start in our mounting bolt, and then snug it up. It's important to start these in by hand so you know they're not cross-threaded. Let's make sure we're holding onto that AC condenser with some pliers so it does not twist, and then snug that bolt. Okay, it's bottomed out. 
Let's take it a little further just to make sure it's completely tightened. Give it a wiggle to make sure it's secure. Do the exact same thing to your other AC line on the passenger side. Now let's make our way back to the front. We'll use an 18 millimeter wrench to remove our plug from the area. Once you have that off of there, continue on putting on your pressure sensor. Before we put in that pressure sensor, take the gasket off of your plug. You want to be careful not to damage it. Now we can transfer that directly over to the pressure sensor. Make sure it's bottomed out all the way around. Lubricate it with a little bit of that PAG oil. Continue on by installing it. We'll start this in by hand, bottom it out, and then just give it a light snug with the wrench. You want to be very careful not to twist the aluminum piping while you do this. Once it's secure, continue on with the wiring. Slide it in, listen for a click. Give it a tug, make sure it's secure. Let's take that skid shield and put it in place. Slide it into the proper position. Start in all four of your forward mounting bolts. Once all of your mounting hardware is started, tighten it up. After you've tightened the forward bolts, continue on to the rear bolts. Let's continue on putting the fan shroud into position. Looking at the bottom of the fan shroud, you can tell that you have two areas that protrude down. Now if you were to look down inside there, at the radiator, you'll find two areas for those to slide into. Let's line it up, slide it down into position. There we are. Now that we have the fan shroud slid down there, let's continue on by sliding our fan in, being extremely careful for the radiator cooling fins. Bring this down and put it on the studs that are on the pulley. Once it's down there and on the pulley, continue on by putting on at least one of your mounting nuts to hold this in place. There we are. Now we can take that fan shroud and put it up against the radiator. Once it's in place, continue on with your mounting bolts. Now we can put on the rest of the four mounting nuts for the fan. Once you have all the mounting nuts on there, continue on snugging them up. Make sure these are nice and tight. Now we can move along. Connect in your upper radiator hose. Slide the clamp into place. Make sure it's tight. Now let's grab hold of our overflow hose, bring it under the upper radiator hose, and put it in position on top of the radiator. After that, tighten the clamp. Follow that hose down to its connection point inside of the fan shroud. It's going to fit into the top clips. Press that right in there, make sure it's secure. While we're down there, Put in the other hose. That goes directly underneath it. Time for the upper air intake. We'll slide this into position. 
Once you have it in the proper positioning, you'll notice that the little tab on the top of the intake lines up with the tab on the top of the throttle body. Tighten the clamp. Move along to your hoses. Time for the mass airflow sensor wiring. Make sure you have it secured in the top of the box and then connect in the connector to the mass airflow sensor. Listen for a click, make sure it's secure. Now we can start reconnecting the top box to the lower air filter box. You wanna look down along the inside here. You're gonna find three tabs that fit into three corresponding holes. We'll carefully get those situated and then lock them in with our locking tabs. Time for the upper engine cover. You want to have a look at the bottom side. You're going to find that you have two little tabs that protrude down. And if you were to look at the top of the air intake, you'll find the ports for them to slide down and into. Let's carefully put this in position. Line those up, press them in. Continue on with your two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts in the front. Now we can start resecuring these again. Now the next thing you want to do is reconnect your negative battery terminal. Slide it all the way up against the battery and tighten that mounting nut. Make sure it's completely secured. Now it's going to be time to fill our cooling system. Keep in mind, this isn't a typical cooling system. It has the radiator fill port here, but all the way over towards the passenger side, you also have a pressurized overflow tank. This isn't the typical type that you just put a little bit of coolant in there, it should be good to go. This has to be filled up to a specific height and this has to be full as well. Now with that said, we're going to start filling this with a funnel. We'll take our little adapter and slide it into position. Once you have it on there, put your funnel on. Now we'll continue on by filling this up with 50-50 pre-diluted manufacturer specified coolant. Now, once you've gotten to the point that you fully filled up the radiator here, and you found that as you were filling it, it also put this up to the maximum, you can go ahead and remove the funnel from the area. That's right out of there. After you've done that, continue on with the radiator cap. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is go ahead and start up the truck. You wanna let it run for a little while. Make sure you have plenty of heat coming out of the vents and then double check to make sure you have no coolant leak and make sure it's completely up to the maximum line on the overflow tank itself. Now that we have the coolant filled, the next thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have a professional fully recharge the AC system. They're going to want to make sure that they check it for leaks. After that, you want to make sure it definitely has the protective caps on the lines. Okay friends, we've got the truck back together. At this point, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and close the hood. Take it for a road test, make sure you don't hear any rattling coming from the front end. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.